What's up, rock stars? So, welcome. I am actually in my childhood home in upstate New York, and I'm going to get in a quick workout. So, I wanted to share it with you, and uh, you're going to need a couple of things for this workout. I'm using some old washcloths because we're going to be doing some sliding on the floors. And if you don't have hardwood floors and you happen to have carpet, uh, things that work really well for sliding are paper plates, plastic plates. Uh, frisbees, those kind of things, because you just want to be able to slide on whatever surface that you are on. So I'm going to be using these old washcloths. You're also going to want to have a ledge, bench, step, something like that. I'm actually going to use the window ledge here um, on the side of the house because we're going to do some incline push-ups to work on strengthening our chest a little bit. So very first move, let's go ahead and jump right into this and I'll talk you through modifications as we go. So I want you to come down. Place your hands just below your shoulders. Engage your shoulders back and down together slightly so there's a little engagement and your chest isn't rounding forward. Engage your belly button up towards your core. No arching or sagging back. Some nice, straight, strong legs, okay? Now, once you get into this good position, you're gonna have your gaze about six inches in front of you, neutral. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start running our knees up towards our chest, up towards our hands. Now, if you have any pain in your wrists or being on your hands isn't an option for you, you can go ahead and stand up and do high knees, okay? That's a great option, but if you're down on your hands with me, let's go ahead and get warmed up right now together with our mountain climbers. We're gonna do these for about 30 to 45 seconds total, or you're welcome to count them to yourself. Try to get 50 or 60 total mountain climbers. Focus on your breathing. Keep that core engaged. Keep your shoulder blades back and down. Keep smiling and keep running those legs. Let's go, just a few more. Come on, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice job, all right, you should be feeling warmed up. Your hair should be a little bit messy. <laughs> And we're gonna come back up onto our feet. And we're gonna do a cool move that engages our core, hamstrings, glutes, legs. Here's what you're gonna do. You're going to stand up straight, chest is up, core is engaged. You're gonna step back into a reverse lunge. As you come down, that front knee tracking in line with the toe, back leg just behind you. And you're gonna push yourself off that back toe, coming into a knee driver. You're going to plant that foot down, and we're going to repeat on the other side. Step back into reverse lunge, drive the knee. We're going to keep doing that, alternating left and right, okay? Once you have your balance and you feel good in this position, feel free to go a little faster. If you need a little support, feel free to hold on to the wall while you're doing this movement so that you can control it. Woo. If you'd like to take it up a notch and you want to really challenge yourself, go ahead and add a little hop each time you come up. If you're doing the hop, I recommend doing about 10 on the right leg and then switching to do 10 on the left leg. If you're doing the alternating, you can do 20 total, 10 on each side before you move on to the next exercise. Good. Keep it up. Heart rate up. Three, two, last one. All right, great work. Next move, go ahead and grab your sliders. And what you're gonna do is put one underneath each foot. This is awesome, all right. And we're gonna do a version of a skater lunge. A skater lunge, you know, is when you are going out side to side. And if you don't have sliders, by the way, this is a great way, that would be the move I would tell you to do if you didn't have sliders. Skater lunges, which are just like this, back and forth, watching your knees. If you have the sliders, we're gonna do a skater lunge with the sliders. So you're gonna slide it out, and you're gonna come back, you're gonna slide it out the other direction, okay? Feel free to get your arms involved. Don't slide out too far. If this is a little tricky for you and you want to really watch your pelvis or your knees, hold onto a chair back 
in front of you. Good. I'm sliding all over the place, cleaning the floor. You could teach your kids how to do this move and have them polish your floors for you. Good job, come on. Keep it up, just a few more here, come on. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one. Woo, nice job, all right. Now, if you have been following along with my blog post, you probably remember a couple weeks ago when I was helping you work on the single leg deadlift. Single leg deadlift is an amazing move for helping to strengthen your hamstrings, your lower back, the entire posterior chain, because of course it forces our core to engage, it makes us balance, and it really builds strength and stability through the entire body. Now, if you have any back pain, or you have some pain in your SI joint, when you do that movement, you may wanna see the help of an alignment practitioner to help balance out your pelvis. It's very common to have pelvic rotation happen after you have kids or after an accident or injury. I've had a lot of car accidents and motorcycle crashes, so I see somebody regularly. But if you have stability there, you can do these safely and effectively. Work within pain-free limits. But if you're gonna do the single leg deadlifts with me, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and stomp that left foot. I'm gonna hold on to the wall next to me for support. I'm gonna allow my left hand to go out and I'm gonna hinge forward at the hips and I'm gonna come back with control. Okay, so we're gonna do about five of these on each leg to warm up. Good job. Roll forward. And notice how my shoulders don't dip below my hips each time I come down. My leg has a soft bend in it, but it's pretty much fully straight. And my leg, my, my, I'm pushing my, my, my hip back, just hinging forward there. Good. So we did about, let's do one more here. And also don't let that right hip roll up or roll down. We want to have nice stability in the pelvis. Right foot, remember why we stomp? It's to really feel the engagement of her toe and heel connection. We're going to be balancing on just one foot. So you want to make sure that we're really secure there. So, hinging forward. And I'm a little weaker on my right side. It's really natural to have one side that's not quite as secure. So I am holding onto the wall. There you go. Another thing that you can do with these is you can alternate legs, of course. You can take turns doing them one after another, or you can put both feet down and you can focus on doing single leg deadlifts, just like that, or good mornings, as they're also called when they're done with body weight. So what we're gonna do to kick that up a notch, make it just a little harder, is um, we're gonna actually incorporate a reverse burpee into the single leg deadlift and we're gonna alternate our single leg deadlift. So, if you would like to stick with the single leg deadlift that I just showed you and keep working on that, I want you to do about 10 more on each leg. And if you'd like to try the reverse burpee with me, we're gonna do a combo move. So reverse burpee looks just like this. You sit down, you roll back, and you use your momentum to roll yourself forward. And I like to stand up on one leg, and then I'm gonna hinge forward at the hips and do a single leg deadlift. I'm gonna go back down, and you can use your hands here to support you as you roll back. You can put your hands down at your sides to support you as you roll forward. You can stand on both legs, or you can challenge yourself to stand on one leg. And as you can see, I'm alternating and I'm doing a right leg, a single leg deadlift that time. So I'm gonna go a little faster now. I'm doing my reverse burpee, standing on my left leg, coming into a single leg deadlift, putting both feet down, rolling back, coming up on my right leg this time, and I use my hand to support me as I came up, bending forward, and this is just so awesome for really challenging your mind-muscle connection, integrating all of these movements into your body, and really just getting a phenomenal workout at the same time. So I think this is about three on each leg. I'm gonna go for five total on each leg. We're coming up on four. Great job. Stick with it. And it's okay if you're having to use both hands here. That's great. Do what feels right for your body. Watch your form, I'm not rushing these. This is our last one. And we're gonna do one more on the right leg. One up, and down. Great job, you just mastered <laughs> reverse burpees to single leg deadlifts. 
Now we're going to do a set of incline push-ups. And the incline push-up is just a great move for your chest. Um, it's a little less intense than a full-on push-up on the floor. Um, if you're really working hard and building upper body strength, and even this feels like it's a bit much for you, remember you can always work on push-ups against the wall, where you put your hands against the wall, allow your elbows to come out slightly, keep your back nice and flat, and the more you walk your feet in, the less challenging that will be. So be where you're at, start where you're comfortable. I'm gonna do some push-ups on this window ledge, some incline push-ups, and you could do this on uh, your ottoman or couch side, which would work great. So I'm just gonna have you come down, and remember that strong plank position we learned when we did our mountain climbers. So belly button's in and up, shoulders are engaged, and you come down. And I can only go halfway down because I'm gonna hit the window. That's convenient for me, isn't it? <laughs> do your best, okay? Use the space you're in, make it work for you. You can also do full on push ups if you like. Now, if you're feeling good here and you, you've got another five in you, that's great. Or you can start alternating, lifting one leg and then the other. Great way to increase the challenge slightly while still really focusing on working your chest and core at the same time. Oh, great job. Just a couple more. Three, two, last one. One. You got it. Nice job. All right, we've got just a couple more moves to get through, okay? Next move is really for our abs, upper core, lower core. And if you'd like, you can hook your feet underneath a chair or couch or something. Uh, but I'm actually going to just focus on using my core strength to keep my feet engaged with the floor. So you're going you're gonna to obviously have a carpet or something under you or a mat if you like. Um, I'm doing okay, actually, if you're worried about my back on the hardwood floor. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you're going to come down. You're going to have your hands up by your chin, just like this. <laughs> and you're going to sit up and you're going to punch. Cross punch, okay? Sit up, cross punch. And again, it can really help to have your feet under something if you're still working on that core strength. A couple things I want you to keep in mind. Make sure your lower back stays engaged with the floor when you come down. Make sure you fully roll down, extending your back, elongating your spine. Great job. Come on, let's do five more. Five. Four, three, two, last one. Yeah. Woo. All right, great work. Okay, so that was your core. And last move is we're gonna do um, another type of lunge. We're gonna do, you did your skater slide out. So now we're gonna do another move that incorporates our core, our glutes, and our legs at the same time. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna step out into a lateral lunge. And a couple key things with the lateral lunge. Don't step out so far that you strain your knee, okay? Just step out slightly. As you come into the squat, your weight is gonna stay back in your booty. It's gonna go back in your heels. Make sure I'm far enough over for you to see me. And you're gonna be back in your booty, weight back in your heels. And what you're gonna do as you come out of it is drive the knee up and across your body, okay? So it's gonna come up and across. So we're getting a little nice oblique action here with the lower abs. Your sit-up cross punch really worked your upper abs and your obliques. This is going to work your lower abs and obliques, okay? So get right into it with me. Step out, squat, and drive that knee up into the opposite elbow. Really nice job. I'm going to do it from the side so you can see. Nice. Let's do five, four, Three, last two, two, last one. Now we're gonna switch sides and we're gonna step it out. And we're gonna drive that knee up to the opposite elbow. Step out, drive it across. Great job. Just a few more. And even it out. Really good. Come on. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Fantastic job. All right, that is your circuit. You've got seven awesome moves. What I'd like you to do now is run through that entire circuit two more times, taking any modification that is right for you. Be sure to stay hydrated, take rests as you need them throughout the workout. But, uh, do post below in the comments and let me know how you did with this circuit. 
if you have any questions at all. And uh, for more of my workout plans and meal plans, be sure to check out the programs page on BettyRocker.com. I'm Betty Rocker. You are so awesome. I'll see you back here again next week. Well, next week I'll probably be in Denver. But I look forward to seeing you again. And take good care of yourself until then. Bye.